are getting a Spider-Man 2 because, you know, we're pretty sure we're pretty sure we're getting <laughs> yeah. that. And obviously with the success of Miles Morales, it's going to be hopefully banging uh Caboose, you have some news on the sales of Spider-Man Miles Morales, right? Yeah. I don't think we have exact numbers yet, but it is being reported that Spider-Man Miles Morales has outsold both The Last of Us Part Two and Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, and the first Spider-Man, uh, there's just some information here from a tweet that comes from Benji Sales, where he mentioned the fact that the first Spider-Man game did sell 3.3 million copies within three days. I know there's also a report of The Last of Us selling 4 million copies within that same window, being one of the highest selling PlayStation games of all time. Um, so it's it's a bit of a triumph for Spider-Man Miles Morales, a game that a lot of people liked to uh, like to coin as uh, an over glorified DLC, which I do not think it yeah. is. Um, so for a game to be selling that well, for, for this game to be selling that well on such a quick turnaround from the first Spider-Man game, and then of course with it coming to the PlayStation 5 and being one of kind of the launch titles for that console, it's uh, it's pretty exciting to see, not to mention as well, just the titular character, Miles Morales, being so brand new to the world of uh, of Marvel and getting his own game and it being this well sold and this well received is amazing. Uh, there's nothing but good news here. And I guess that just takes me to the topic of when do we expect that we're going to see a Spider-Man 2? I know we've talked about this a couple times before, mm -hmm. but with Miles Morales having such a quick turnaround, being only, what, two years since the first game, do you think we're going to see uh, a Spider-Man 2 announced this year with a release date being next year? I, uh, oh, oh, uh, that, uh, before we, that, before, before we actually go into two, I just want to say like for Miles Morales to hit that milestone once we, you know, like that's insane because I feel like a lot of people were like, what's the point of this game? That's kind right. of an in between. I know myself, I was kind of like, it sucks that they have this amazing character and they're just putting him into an in between game that like doesn't get the full amount of time and love mm -hmm. that, you know, Spider-Man 2 will be getting. Um, yeah. But that just shows you that Miles Morales is a very interesting character that people want to know more about him. Yep. And it makes me hopeful um, for either his existence in Spider-Man 2 or, you know, another game, another Miles Morales game that could be more fully scaled. But like props to that team at Insomniac, because mm -hmm. like they were making two games at once with yeah. that one and yeah. they surprised us with Miles Morales and launched it on time and everything went well. So I just wanted to say like props to them. They they also only recently just added a new suit to the game. They yeah. added some, right. they, they started to play a little more with the PlayStation 5 tech with like a muscle definition and stuff like that, that they added in, which is really cool. Um, and it's great. I mean, yeah, granted it's not as big as the first Spider-Man game, but I'd argue that it's, it's better paced than the first Spider-Man game. I, I think I, so I as well. PlayStation games for five months in a row. That yeah. is huge. Yeah. For for a game that people would consider glorified DLC, which I disagree with because we just had the conversation of like, one, does every world, or does every game need, need to be uh, an open world? But more so, does every game need to be this giant experience? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and my answer is no. And also, too, Caboose, to answer your question about Spider-Man 2, I think that they already have another bite-sized experience, possibly Gwen, possibly someone else, on mm. the way. And as soon as Spider-Man 2 hits hits a snag, they need some more time, anything at all, they're going to start focusing on kind of getting a plan ready for that next bite-sized experience. Mm. Because if you, if you have to push Spider-Man 2 back to make it a better game, I think that people would be okay with that if they get another bite-sized experience in the meantime. Also, I it, it's really hard to say if they should even release Spider-Man 2 on PS4. If you do another one of these bite-sized experiences, you can put it on PS4 and PS5, and then that pushes Spider-Man mm. 2 into that realm yeah. of like, okay, it's a PS5 exclusive. It's designed specifically for you know this console, this next generation, because... Nobody wants to be a cyberpunk. Nobody wants to put yeah. their game on right. an older generation and watch it suffer. Yeah. The the thing is, though, the reason why I don't think Spider-Man 2 would suffer that same fate is similar to what they did with Miles Morales. They kind of just took the engine they already had and just tinkered right. around and played with it and kind of expanded on it. It's already a good looking game. 
we don't really need to go any leaps and bounds in terms of graphical fidelity okay. for a Spider-Man 2. Oh my all God, it's so good. For, yeah, all, all I'm just looking at this. I'm like, ah, oh, this yeah. game is so good. It's such a good looking game. And it's like, it, it's not like we need to really worry about, you know, upgrading any visuals. So I think right. all that Insomniac is trying to do here is just expand on gameplay. And then of course, create and expand on a story that continues from Spider-Man <laughs> PS4 and then Spider-Man Miles Morales. <laughs> Uh, so I feel like there is a there's definitely a possibility we see Spider-Man 2 announced this year coming next year exclusive to the PlayStation 5. Yeah, I think definitely it has to be um, exclusive yes. because yeah. just how we see like we still don't have we don't have a PlayStation 5. No, we have an upgrade for Miles Morales for PlayStation yeah. 5, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yes. and you know, the fact that they're dealing with like even these small little like muscle definition upgrades has me thinking because they kind of did the same with the PlayStation 4 Spider-Man where they were doing upgrades to that game for the longest time before yeah. they even announced Miles Morales. And you have to just assume that that was under prep for Miles Morales and hopefully Spider-Man 2. So the fact that they're still messing around with Miles Morales has me hoping that like they're still tweaking um, Spider-Man 2. Um, and mm -hmm. I feel like if we get an announcement this year, I could see the game releasing for the holiday of this year or early like next year, like January, February. Yeah. Under I normal guess. circumstances, I would agree with both of you I, I, because I do think that after Miles Morales, if you're Sony and Insomniac, you want to push an, a sequel as, as mm. fast as you can. But they still have to release Ratchet and Clank. And yeah. that game, when it was originally announced, was supposed to be a launch window game. It's not coming out yeah. until June, which is yeah. just just goes to show like how far back in it's development. A big, it's a big window, Steve. It's huge. <laughs> it's, a, it's a double pane window. Of air. Um, no, so it, because of COVID and because of these delays, like these guys need to take a break at some point, and I, I yeah. would not want them to rush this thing, yeah. Uh, yeah. rush a sequel out. So I think that by the time we get around to Ratchet and Clank coming out, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be Sony and saying, okay, we're, we're already going to announce a sequel. Let them catch up because I mean, we still have Horizon, which at this point I don't think is coming out this year. I'm not confident. God of War really? definitely not coming out this year. They still have Grand Grand Turismo. Yeah, God of War uh, definitely. See, no. And that's what that's the thing that worries me about if it's going to be if they don't do it this year, is it going? to be a 2023 because if we know right we still have horizon gran turismo ratchet and crank ratchet and clank god of war you can't even those games are so big you can't even put out like announcements near the releases you have to give those games the space that they need also too we don't have ps5s it, there's well have, and, and there's that's a huge a point yeah ps5s is that if you release spider-man 2 for only ps5 this winter and you still don't have like PS5s in stock on shelves. What's the point? Your game is going to be a sales number. You're absolutely right because as we've seen with kind of Sony's marketing and that article with Sony, it kind of seems like they understand that their PlayStation 5s are not as accessible, although mm -hmm. I saw reports that it's still like top selling um, console, right? They, they just so can't keep up they with just demand. can't keep up with the exactly. They can't keep up with the demands there. So now that you say that, yeah, maybe we won't see if it, it depends. If Spider-Man is two is supposed to be a PlayStation five exclusive. And I'm going to say, hopefully God of war is also a PlayStation five exclusive as I well. So. I would say we are not, we're not going to see those until I think next year. War 2, I think God of war two and horizon are both horizon coming to PS4. We know that. Yeah. yeah but I, that's God the thing war, I could God see. War 2, I'm telling no, you. I don't think God of war will see. We yeah, had this discussion <laughs> earlier this year too. I'm telling I, you. I feel like, Horizon makes sense to be kind of this uh, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 game. I don't I don't think it, it's going to be a PlayStation 5 exclusive as we know, right? I be I I would hope because God of War is such a big title for them, they want to sell consoles with that right. title. Um that's why I would think at least it'd be a, a year exclusive on PlayStation 5 and then they do like a version for PlayStation 4 later. We'll, I think we'll also see, I I think with that being like with it originally being announced to be coming out this year, we'll see if they meet that. 
but it being yeah. originally announced to be coming out this year and knowing Horizon is going to be on the PS4, it would have been weird because mm-hmm. unless yeah. plans have changed and they have scrapped development on whatever PS4 version they were going to be making, it would be weird that they would be developing a God of War sequel that was meant to be exclusively for the PlayStation 5 and then a Horizon sequel that's coming to the PS4 and the PS5 that mm-hmm. were meant to be coming out in the same year. And to that point, I think that because under the assumption that it was delayed, because I again, I don't see God of War coming out this year whatsoever. I, don't, I, don't I think that, that I think that gave them enough of an out to be like, OK, maybe we can release this at a point where we have enough stock for PlayStation 5s, release it just as a PlayStation 5 SKU and boost sales for this console. Just but let it go crazy and but kind of market it also be like market it. How the assumption. Oh, sorry. Market it as they did Miles Morales. Like a lot of people didn't know Miles Morales was available for PlayStation 4, right? So I I think definitely God of War is going to, when they have more stock of PlayStation 5s, that game is going to launch when they have Mm -hmm. more stock and more people have PlayStation 5s in their home. Um, I would think as well, hopefully Spider-Man 2, I think just how they marketed the first Spider-Man, how they marketed Miles Morales, same now that, now I'm changing my mind, same with that. It's probably when they have more stock of the PlayStation 5. But to Steve's point, um, and I'm just going to say this before, you know, Kabisi jump in. um, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But to Steve's point, like how, you know, Ratchet and Clank was delayed, right? So now it's a June release. It was supposed to come out at launch with um, the PlayStation 5. We're not going to be seeing that. I think because of that, that just bought them more time for place for Spider-Man 2. Yeah. So yeah. you know what I mean? Because obviously it's not the same, te- same, same team, sorry, that's working on that. So I think it just bought them a little more time um, that they are using. I would, I would even argue the fact that they're tweaking stuff in Miles Morales and adding suits, maybe they have a lot of time on their hand because guess what? The game's probably done. They're just waiting. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if some of these games are already done. They're still tweaking it. Um, and yes, I know with COVID now, like things are obviously a bit difficult, but I wouldn't be surprised if these games may be done like Spider-Man. Um, and because of the fact that there's not a lot of PlayStation 5s, they're just not releasing the game. But see, now that you say that, though, and with Caboose talking about, you know, how they're just kind of tweaking it, it would if I guess in my mindset, right, if Spider-Man 2 can run on a PS4 Pro, fine. Why not put it on PS4? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But something like God of War, you that has to be literally perfect. It's like Mm -hmm. that is something I don't think you even risk putting on a PS4. I think that's something that you put on a PS5. And also, too, here's the thing. Like Camille said, and I'm going to be, I'm pointing the fingers at myself. I'll spend 700 to a thousand dollars for a God of War PS5. Yep. <laughs> yes. That's, that so, is, that's the big thing. If they're waiting for special edition PS5s, mm, I'm sold. That, uh, that's it. See, and that's, we're, see, that's and, exactly and, what but, I'm going to bring up. But remember, Aaron, I'm just going to add to that. <laughs> remember as well, this God of War is really the last game that's coming out before we see any other, like it's gonna be a long time before we see another like PlayStation exclusive, like on the level of The Last of Us, Uncharted. Yeah. Okay, so they have to really yeah. plan when they are and why they're releasing that game at that time. So that, yeah. go ahead. The the last point that I'd make here is exactly <laughs> what Malik was saying. We keep we keep talking about PlayStation Five restocking. I think we have all of this year for that to happen, and all of next year. Spider Man Two is going to be launching fall of 2022, which is where I am going to be expecting it. I think that's plenty of time for enough PS Fives to restock to get it in people's hands, and for there to be enough where people are going to be like, okay. Let's mm-hmm. go. Let's like let's make this an exclusive for the PlayStation Five. And I also think, right around the release of it, that just like what they did with the PS4 Pro and the bundle that they released for that, when the first Spider-Man game was coming out, there's going to be a Spider-Man themed PlayStation Five that they will restock again when that game's coming out, and that will absolutely mm-hmm. be a console seller. People will want to buy that. No way they're going to want to miss out on something like that. Just like they wouldn't want to miss out on a God of War console. And I think, me personally, God of War. The, the the latest one that we got already looks like a PS5 quality game. Yeah. You know, even on the PS4, it looks great. The Last of Us Part 2 is one of the best looking games I've played maybe ever um, in terms of just fidelity, in terms of just visuals, right? So I think that console is still so powerful in that department. Granted, if there is in terms of gameplay some things that God of War really pushes the limits on that needs the power of the PlayStation 5, 
fine. But I don't think that it does. Mm -hmm. When it comes to something like Spider-Man being open world, needing those faster load times, that might be something where you need it to be a PlayStation 5 exclusive to completely take advantage of that hardware. So I see I see a real scenario where Spider-Man 2 comes out next year in fall, is PlayStation 5 exclusive, and there's a console that's bundled with it. All right. Well said. I agree. I I'm going to... I'm going to counter that, um, no. <laughs> but I think it depends on um, how production goes for the new, like, because I thought we would have already seen a black version of the PlayStation 5. We haven't. Right. Yeah. And I do think that was I think that was in the plans, but obviously because of the pandemic and we know that there are manufacturing issues both on Xbox side and the PlayStation side. Right. Like, I feel like that is playing into it. Um, so because PlayStation's just being so hush, I think it does lie as well as how we go with this pandemic and how they go in terms of producing consoles to yeah. sell. Yeah. 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 Cause I mean, if you look at it, right, it's, there's a shortage in rare metals. Like there's no way around it. And PlayStation could have actively planned ahead of this, like you said, and just cut back on the normal amount of PlayStations that they were producing and instead opt and plan to the future of, you know, these special editions. Also too, you can start bundling games. Like if you give people Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man Miles, Miles Morales, and then the first Spider-Man bundled with a, a, an exclusive or like a, you know, special edition PS5, that's going to sell instantly. And then you could, I mean, I don't think they're going to do a Horizon Zero Dawn PS5, but they could do a, they could do something where you get a PS5 and you get, you know, the new Horizon mm -hmm. bundled with the old one remastered. There's a lot of opportunity for them to go back, but I don't see Sony releasing a lot of games this year until they get more PS5s in people's hands, unless they're going to do special editions. Because the thing is, is their, their player base is just too small. You're absolutely right. Yeah. We're just going to have to wait and see how the uh, rest of the year kind of goes as studios and these companies deal with uh, the pandemic and yeah. making hardware while at these tough times. Uh, but for now, that's kind of it for us uh, at the Squadcast. We talked the talk um, and we're, we're going to walk out of here, uh, but <laughs> but not before. I, I find out what all of you guys are up to uh, this coming week. Uh, Caboose, what can we expect from you and where can we find it? Mortal Kombat movie comes out this week and yeah. I am very, very excited for it. Got a pretty cool video coming to my channel that's related to the Mortal Kombat movie. I'm sure that people are going to be excited about. And then, of course, I'm going to I'm going to talk about it. When next it week. On April so 23rd. Are, can we are we going to be getting a review next week? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You okay. guys are going to hear what I have to think about the movie. Uh, come time for its release. I'm really, really excited for it. Very much looking forward to it. Um, and then besides that, just keeping up with the content on the YouTube channel. Got some plans as well on the stream side of things in terms of bringing back the Mortal Kombat tournament that I was running. So there's some exciting things going on there as well. And then you can keep up with all my shenanigans, Twitter and Instagram at Kabusi K. All right, Malik. Uh, you know, it, kind of a, a slow thing. I've been focusing a lot on Valorant, haven't been writing as many articles. Um, I will be live on my Twitch uh, in about an hour talking about all the Valorant matches. Uh, but other than that, go follow uh, us on Squad State uh, over on Twitter. I'm helping out run the Twitter now. So go over there, drop a follow, engage with some of our tweets. Steve, we actually just posted one of your articles. You got a nice little Souls-like guy, so yeah. I'll see what you got going on. Uh, yeah, this week, I mean, we're saying goodbye to the current state of Verdansk. So, you know, we're looking forward to that uh, big Warzone update this Wednesday. I'm so excited. Three o'clock ET. Let's see what happens. Come on. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, it won't break the game. It probably hopefully. will. It will. It, it will. It will it'll break the game. Expected to. Also, the last update that the game had, um, like completely, I don't know if it's this is for you, Steve, but it's been really choppy for me and my friends. Um, the game oh, recently, yeah. so we'll just hope that everything fixes itself when uh, Verdance, the mid-season event happens well, so new season season three well yeah yeah new season sorry new yeah. season um, happens but no i was gonna say maybe maybe the ground just erupts and a whole bunch of rose skins comes out and can't see maybe. any of them man well there's uh, also now when you kill people zombies so maybe it's oh, just yeah. like zombies infest and then the world dies and i don't know well, we'll knows, i'll have to check yeah. in with you next week you'll have yeah, that yeah, info 
Call Kanto will be... sound like a Resident Evil movie. It's a little, a little <laughs> bit, a little bit. But yeah, you can check out uh, squadstate.com as well as uh, my Twitter at svikvari for all that content. Awesome. Um, for myself, I am going to be playing. <laughs> Call of Duty uh, when that event happens. I'm so excited for that. I'll probably post a video on my YouTube all about that goodness. Uh, be sure to soon tune in at This Is Camco on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all that stuff um, to get all the goodness. But then we, we bring you goodness every week right here. Uh, so stay tuned. Next week we'll be back. You know, we're going to get some Mortal Kombat info, some COD info to you. And until then, you can check out the website squadstate.com. We got a lot of cool stuff there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you next week. Bye guys.